All right. Your mark, get set, go. Okay, so uh, going back to the schedule, because I always like to revisit the schedule at the beginning of every class, checking what date it is. It is the 6th. So do this Friday, creating your theme from your template, which I will then also at the same time, because uh, you may or may not uh, be in the process of you know uploading your theme and putting stuff in. And then uh, the fun thing was I made you do an assignment where you had to set up your menu system. And then when it was due to go grade your menu system, I probably wouldn't be able to see it because you hadn't put it into your theme yet. So basically, you got a free extra week to turn it in. It's basically how. Uh, but note, note to self for next time. When I when I realized that, I laughed to myself and I thought, uh, hopefully nobody notices that. And then uh, I can't. Was that was that you, Blake, who noticed it? And Chris, yeah, one of you noticed it and busted me on it. You know, and I had to fess up. But uh, so I will then uh, grade your create content menu system and your theme from your templates uh, over the weekend. Um, we just did the creating a navigation and menu system. Uh, and today we are going to create the template files for WordPress theme, which should take us probably about a half an hour maybe at the most. And then we'll have open lab. Yeah. So then what's going to be the difference between creating menu system up there and then create main and submenu on week six. <laughs> so how this works is create your content menu system means menu system in the admin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Create your main and submenu systems. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Maybe you can actually work in our system. Right, code. Okay. You caught me there too. That's cool. What is the difference? <laughs> yeah, I had to think. I can work with that because I have trouble with my names. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, what we did uh, on Monday then was uh, let me just kind of ask everybody um, how'd this go? Putting in the WP nav menu. Um, function and then um, being able to, uh, like I said, one of the big concepts, the way they pass arguments through their functions now um, is by using an array, theme location, main menu, container, div. So a lot of, um, a lot of functions then, just like WP list pages, uh, there are other functions that are similar, like if we do a Google search for WP get pages, right? If you are ever, uh, like I said, if you can't find the link on my site to the whatever function, if you type in WP whatever whatever that function is, um, that pretty much is going to come up first. Right on uh, the codec. So let's say this get pages function. Same thing. It uses uh, an array to pass arguments, and you'll see arguments like meta key, meta value, meta key, and meta value. When we get to talking about custom fields, right? Um, that's what meta key and meta value will be. And I'll have a better example of that here down the road. Um, but if we take a look at, well, let's show you an example of what that means. So if I go to my GitHub and I take a look at my archaic school theme that I need to convert to responsive, um, And I go to sidebar. You will see here I'm using that old legacy uh, get pages, children pages, even while, or get sub pages, even while on a sub page. This is the old way of passing those arguments title, li, child of, 
et cetera, instead of passing it through an array like this, right? Like we, we did. Um, if we also look here, you also see meta key, navigation, meta value, class, okay? So you can see on my, let's say, school pages, uh, if you have never noticed that when you go to, let's say, a class of mine, you then see all these subpages, but they're broken out into these camps, class, lectures, assignment, students. These are all uh, at the same level of hierarchy in terms of these are all just subpages of Web 170. They are then broken out into class, lectures, assignments, etc. Because I've said meta key, I've assigned navigation, meta value, assignments. Okay. So if we, for instance, look at the lecture uh, exercise, and here's the thing: what we're doing, um, I've almost come up with a new taxonomy label because these lectures uh, are kind of exercises, right? And in my 532 class, I call them exercises that we kind of do together. Uh, so I was thinking lecture sizes. Yes, no? At least thank you for smiling a little bit, right? But uh, yeah, never mind. Uh, so it's like... clever, but I wouldn't... Yeah, I know, I know, thanks. <laughs> The lawyer costs. Solidarity, man. Solidarity. Yeah. So if we go to, okay, back to me, back to me. So if we go to the lecture, creating templates files for a WordPress theme that we're going to do today, and I go and log in, how many of you want to do that little login button too? I'll show you how to do that today if you want to. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of useful instead of always having to type in WP admin. So if I log in and go back to this lecture, refresh, say edit page, <clears throat> this page right here is uh, parent, Web 170, right? So it is a subpage of the parent page Web 170, order 14. But down here, I've used custom fields. So with custom fields, you can basically select a, think of this in terms of a variable and a value right? Uh, key and value. So I can select the key of navigation, right? So I've got navigation lecture. So that's how this page begin lectures if post, post parent, right? In other words, if the page has a post parent, uh, write out this getting post parent, else, host ID, right? If children, echo children, right? Uh, so children calls the WP list pages function and then passes that argument, meta key of navigation, meta value of lecture. So that's how all of these get camped into lectures assignments, students, et cetera, okay? Uh, so the new way of passing that argument would be the same here, meta key, et cetera, meta value in that array. So is that, as kind of a side note, does that make sense? How to, so look for that as a uh, kind of a constant theme in terms of passing arguments through functions is what you are gonna look for is then uh, what, what, uh, in the associative array, uh, do I have to give a new value to? Does that make sense in theory? So what we're going to do today then, do you have a question? No? Oh, 
I say, and in practice. Yes. So what we're going to do today then is we have been so far working off of one file, index.php. It's a pretty long file so far. So if I did this, How many of you have ever worked with a WordPress theme a little bit in the past and wondered which template file is being called where? Does that come across? I had that same question when I was learning WordPress and I couldn't figure out, well, which template file was being used for a page or a posting or this or that. So I came up with this brilliant idea of, hey, write what template file it is to then if I upload that now. It should tell me, oh, it's way over there. Somebody didn't do something in CSS correctly, being me. Uh, I have two, let's see. Content, sidebar, middle. Oh, that's right. Small is uh, an inline element, is it not? It is. Style. Small. Display. Lock. Refresh. Oh. <laughs> Middle overflow hint to hidden. Yeah, it's there. Interesting. Small inside bar in content. this they're both CSS turning on the fly there right uh, so basically then with this tagged index I can then down the road tag all of my template files like that to see where they show up, right? Because what we're going to be doing today then is we are going to be breaking our index file apart into the include files and the page and posting files. Now, those are my terminology, right? The WordPress terminology is uh, pretty much template files, right? But um, from, let's say, Web 200 or Web 120 or ITC 240, uh, you learned how to do include files, right? Okay. So uh, similar thing, right? So if you've ever broken a template apart and created a multi-page website using PHP include files, uh, this should be relatively familiar to you. Uh, so if we go to this lecture, um, this lecture size, right, because it's under exercises. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, where we're doing include, include header, et cetera, et cetera. In the WordPress way of doing it, though, we are not going to be using the PHP function of include, nor writing out the pathway to includes header, et cetera. Because if we did that, 
this pathway would be really, really long, right? Because we have to go uh, from our roots into our WP content folder, into our themes folder, into, you know, whatever folder, et cetera, okay? So instead, in the WordPress world, then, they just merely use get header, okay? So they've written their own function, get header, that basically uh, includes the header, goes and looks for header.php, okay? If you ever want to see to yourself or say to yourself, you know what? Uh, I really want to see what that function actually does. How many of you have ever thought to yourself, like, I want to go see the code of that function, okay? You should be able to, down at the bottom, say get header is located in WP includes general template. Click on that and it should take you to where that function lives and what it does. Okay, So you can see here that in that function somewhat it goes and looks for the absolute path to your header PHP in your themes folder, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, uh, are you able to call up different headers? It kind of looks like the parameters. Like that? Header one, header two, header three, header main, header this, header that. Yes. Similar to, you can make multiple sidebar files. Sidebar left, sidebar right, sidebar up, sidebar down. And do the same thing, right? Typically on a header file, um, well, I've never had a chance or uh, a reason to use multiple header files. What I have done is this. And maybe this might be a better way to go. For a while on my Rehab Washington, I had page and page no spotlight. So I had two page files. One that had a spotlight, one that didn't have a spotlight. I combined that and then basically said, if we're using the uh, custom fields, again, custom field banner, if I've used the custom field name banner, true, then write the code for the spotlights for that source, go get the value of banner, which was basically the URL to that source image, right? So this is where also you can do things like, uh, remember on our navigation, we said, if it's a page, do this. If it's a posting, or if it's not a page, do this, right? You can do similar things like, instead of creating multiple template files, right, which is the logical first choice to do. I need a template file for this, I need a template file for this, so I have to do two separate pages. Well, not necessarily. If the difference between those two template files is very significant, yeah, you should maybe put them in two different files. If it's just, uh, well, if I'm doing in this, put this one little thing here, like,
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the header file. Should be. Head utilities. Da, 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 da. Tchotchkes. See? Tchotchkes. My label. Uh, breadcrumbs. If this is not the home page, then call the breadcrumb function, right? So that's where you can do conditionals where you can say, is this a template page? Is this a page? Is this a page named? Is it a page? In other words, if we go and look at the is page function, is it a page? Is it page number 42? Is it the page called contact? Is it the page with the slug of about me? Is it page 42 about me and contact? Right? Do this. Does that make sense? Does that kind of answer your, yeah. right? Yeah. So I would go that route versus multiple headers, right? A little bit of conditionals based on where you are within the site would probably do you better than different template files, different header files. Again, I used to do the same thing when, you know, I need a template file for everything. Now, you know, we could essentially just use index.php and write a shitload, I did say shitload for the viewers at home, of conditionals that say, if we're here, do this, if we're there, do this, if we're here, do this, okay? But that gets a little bit, you know, which way do you go? What are the pros? There's pros and cons of the two different approaches. Yeah, because I did on my Web 200, I did a lot of like, if you're on this page, do this. Right. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if it would just be easier to just do a different header. But I don't know. I'll try that. Maybe it's all relative. Yeah. You know, it's it all. It's how you want to solve it. You know, it's basically, do you want to organize your closet, uh, dresses, pants, shirts, or do you want to organize your closets? blue, red, green, which is the more, the better way to organize it. I guess it kind of, does that make sense? You know, it kind of comes down to that a lot. Okay, so what we're going to do then is in this index uh, file um, that says, hey, Mark, what's up, dude? Um, I need to then figure out what is going to be my header include and what is going to be my footer include. Uh, I'm going to also um, get rid of my old navigation. I don't need that. Okay. So typically, well, let's say it like this. If you were in my Web 200 class, right, you may have used the similar naming conventions that I do. I also, Raven also uses the naming convention middle, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay. So basically what I would want to do then, according to um, this multi-page file here, right, uh, take everything from, you know, my, this is where instead of middle I used content, but everything from that beginning content area up everything from that bottom content area down. So everything from that, the beginning content area up for header, everything from the ending content down for footer. So I am going to uh, basically do this. X, two. Oh, sorry, you said that uh, you called middle content years. So uh, in that other one, um, you didn't create new ones. What? You didn't create new ones. Right, because I had a question that I wanted to answer. Um, unfortunately, in my HCD uh, 532, I used different labels and I've regretted it ever since. So um, basically, in this design that I have going on right now, I have, let's say it like this. I have a logo, a navigation, a content area, this white content area that in this case I call middle. 
So if I inspect this element, it's middle, and then it has two columns, content and sidebar. Okay. So what I want to do then is take everything from, in, in other words, content and sidebar, this content right here is going to be the page specific area, that that's really going to be the what we make our page.php or single.php, our front page.php, et cetera, template files out of. Okay. But again, it's how it's however you want to slice and dice it up. Sidebar, I'm going to put into an include bar. Okay. But the way this is kind of drawn out is middle, one column, two columns inside middle, and middle. Okay. So yeah, that other that other lecture, uh, I named things differently. I should not have done that. But so what I'm going to do then is for the beginning middle. New. What type of file? PHP template. Maybe. I don't know. Let's go back. Cancel. Yeah. Close. So, uh, yeah. Are you sure you want to? Yes. Get rid of it. New. Uh, PHP, HTML. It doesn't really matter because we're just going to take all the contents out of it anyway, right? But I'll choose PHP because I'm going to be making a PHP file. When I do that, Dreamweaver is going to do this. Select all, delete, paste, right? I want to save this then as In my, so again, I'm working in my WordPress SP15, WP content, themes, testing with pickles. And this is where I want to save it as, what, Victoria, what were you saying? Uh, Header.php. Okay. okay. I want to go back to index.php. Get header. Same thing like the includes, right? Save. If I save that in my header file, so now my header is sitting in the same level as index.php, right? If I go back to my site, and I refresh, yeah, it looks like nothing happened. Go back to Dreamweaver again in my template and content. Ooh. Look at that. I've got those named wrong. Content. See, again, I get all screwed up with names because I use the wrong names in my UW stuff. I want to then uh, say from closing middle all the way down to the ending HTML, X, new, PHP, select all, paste. Because that's everything after or including the closing. Yeah. So if I draw it on the board for you viewers at home, sorry. This is what my design looks like, right? Like, okay. So I'm basically doing this. OK. 
Okay. I'm also going to, it depends on where I want to put it, but in mine, I am also going to do sidebar.php. Okay, so in page.php, or let's just go with what we have so far, index.php. Somebody was supposed to throw this red pen away. All right, index.php. So when index.php loads, right, it's going to call header, footer, sidebar, and then this in here is going to be my page specific stuff. Right? So, does that make sense, Blake? Mm -hmm. It's Blake, right? I'm calling you the right name? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, because I've called people the wrong name for months before. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to save this then as. What was that, Victoria? Twitter.php. I'm going to go back to index. I'm going to come back down here and say get footer. Save. So now I have. Index, which now grabs header, which now grabs footer. Let's see if I did it correctly. It's good to me. And we're still working off of index.php. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is sidebar. So, uh, in this case, um, I could, if I wanted to, put the sidebar include inside the footer include, like I've done before. You may have seen it. You know, it depends on how you want to, where you want to do your includes. But to keep things a little more organized, let's say. I'm just going to do it here. New, create, select all, paste. You're noticing the pattern here, right? Uh, save. What am I saving this as, Victoria? Sidebar. Sounds good. Save. And I realized what I did with this. This small actually should have gone there. That's where I put it. Get sidebar. Right. And this is where, for sidebar, if we had multiple sidebars, well, let's save this and test. Okay, things look exactly like they did. Going back to lecture. So, so far we've created the document header, right? Again, if you click on uh, one of these links, like document header, it'll go to the document header file and what typically is in there. Let's close some of my other windows. Uh, 
Uh, same thing for footer. If you click on here, footer. I then decided to include sidebar. Here then is where if we look up WP get sidebar. This is where we can see that we can also do this. Get sidebar left. Get sidebar right. Okay. Let me say it like this. Right now when we're saying get sidebar, that is different than the dynamic sidebar that contains widgets. So this getting sidebar and registering sidebar are two different things. Let me say that again. Getting sidebar and registering sidebar are two different things. When you say register sidebar, you are talking about the widgetized dynamic sidebars. Okay. So if I were to go back to uh, my school site and I went into the dashboard and went to widgets, I have sidebar one, sidebar two, and we'll talk about widgets in a little bit more detail. But I have the subscribe widget, today's events, upcoming events, today's events, right? This is the widget that comes along with the plugin for that calendar plugin that I'm using. So if we're on the home page of my site then, my school site, this calendar right here is a widget that in my sidebar here, so here's the, here's the hard coding of our sub navigation, right? So if I go back to then, uh, so again, I'm in the GitHub for my school theme. If I go to index.php, get header, get footer. In the footer file, nope, in the header file is the call to get sidebar. Okay? Again, you can put it wherever you want. That then grabs sidebar.php. In here, then, here is begin widgets. Dynamic sidebar one, dynamic sidebar two. Dynamic sidebar one, dynamic sidebar two. I really wish they were named widget areas instead of, so they have conflicting names, right? That might confuse you. But it's on tape, and you can go back and watch that a few times until it just is an everyday occurrence. Okay? Does that make sense in theory? So the sidebar that we just made, that's something that's, that we hard-coded. If you wanted something that your client could go in and change, we'd have to do it through that. So you would do your sidebar include, and then inside your sidebar include, you would call dynamic sidebars that you have to register first in your functions file. Register sidebars, how many? Four. Sidebar one, sidebar two, sidebar three and four. Oh. Or sidebar three and four, they don't have anything in them. At least they're there. So yeah, if 
my then clients wanted to do this. Let's see, let's see. Um, <laughs> ah, meta. I want to put the login stuff in my sidebar. We're jumping ahead. I'm going to do widgets down the road in a little bit different lecture, but you know, you get me on an appropriate tangent, you might as well, right? So if I say login stuff, save this. Oh, it's probably not going to show because I am saying in sidebar PHP, dynamic sidebar one and two only. Let's put it there in sidebar two. Go back to my home page. And now the login stuff exists. It's dangerous giving them that much access. Good thing about a content management system, client gets to create, update, and maintain their own content. The bad thing about the client or content management system is the client's going to totally fuck your design to hell by creating, updating, and maintaining their content. Let it go. Whatever that song Elsa, <laughs> right? So now what we need to do, right? So if we go back here, in my design, I then have said get header, get sidebar, get footer. I have then, so we're still working on index.php. Get header, get footer, get sidebar. Everything is saved, yes. Everything still looks like it did. Now what I want to do is because pages and postings can be significantly different, or it's a good, um, here's what typically differs in pages and postings. So if I'm on a posting here, is where I'm calling a featured image. Here is where I am calling the byline and date. Okay, so if I went to my jolly old GitHub, Premium Design Works, you'll notice I have page.php single.php, page-home.php, which that one I should have just called front-page, and index.php. Single is the one for postings. It has the byline in it, the time, get the date, posted in the category. Get featured image with links. That is a function, a custom function that I wrote to get my featured image, pull it out of there, get the content. Comments template, okay? Uh, we're probably not going to deal with the comments section in this class. I'm going to allow you guys to put the comments in there and explore all that. But typically, single blog postings have comments, whereas pages get the title, get the spotlights, get child pages, right? No getting comments. So they differ in terms of purpose and functionality quite a bit. But it's all, it's all relative and depends on how you are going to set it up, okay? But for uh, good practice, good syntax, good whatever manners you want to say, Shits and giggles, however you want to put it, Victoria. You okay there? Yeah, you need some water? You sure? Okay. Uh, let's make a single posting 
and a page.php, right? Here's what we're going to do. Right now, we're on index.php, and it's pretty basic. We have our starting loop. We have our ending of our loop. We have call the content area. We have a title that gets the permalink. Okay? So it's got our basic core components that we need. So we can simply do this. Save as. Page.php. Save. And then I am going to tag this right here. Page.php. Now that it's saved as page.php. And we're going to see where page.php shows up and when. I'm on the home page. Index gets called. I go to the portfolio section. Page.php gets called. If I go back to the home page and I go to one of my sample postings, right now it's still being used by index. Let's change that. We go back to index, save as. Single.php. Single. Now, if I go to I'm recording this lecture, single. Okay, for single posting. We go back to the home page, index. Right now, we don't have our, so if I go to blog, I haven't set, th set this up. Oh, I did set it up as my blog feed page, okay? If you have a website that you don't want the blog feed to necessarily be the home page because you want like a spotlight to be on there, you want it to be kind of a, a normal front page, and then you want somebody to go to your blog section to see your blog feed, right? This is where in this theme, that's where I unfortunately, because at the time I didn't know that there was a front dash page template that just automatically got called, that's where I created this page dash home. If you are going to create a template file outside of the normal convention of the WordPress template file system, you can then use this to then name that template so you can use it within your system. Okay. If we go to WordPress.org templates. Here's where you'll see header, footer, sidebar, content sections. That's not the link I'm really looking for. The one that I'm looking for is theme development document head. There you go. So here on this theme development, page, template files list, style, index, comments, front dash page. This is what I should have used for my front page. Home. I generally stay away from that one because uh, it gets confused with index quite often. Single, the single posting template. Here's where we can also do single dash post type. 
Remember, Douglas, when we were talking about custom post types? Page, category, tag, taxonomy, author, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, search, 404, so on and so forth, right? Those are the normal files that get used in the certain places. If you do not have something like category, right? In other words, this could be the template that if we are in my blog section and I want to use the category and see everything in the category of articles, The category of articles, right, is using index.php as its template, okay? So you don't have to have all of those, right? Does that make sense, sort of? So what I want you guys to do, at least, is set up single page index Save as, front dash page, because we're going to make a, a static home page design here in the next few weeks. We're also going to do a better blog feed design using featured images, etc. So when we do the home page design, I'm going to show you how to do multiple loops, right, to call different pieces of content. Right? For right now, if we say save this as front dash page, and we retag it. And spell front correctly. If we go back to our home page. Once I Log in. And tell my system under settings, reading, and then I wait. Once I say a static page, notice I haven't selected any static front page because I haven't created a static front page. If I go back to pages, add new, home, add something really stupid. Publish it. Settings, reading. Now I can select home, right? To be my static home page. Save changes. Visit sites. Now it's pulling from front dash page which then what we're going to do is why I made you guys do a main page and a home page, right? Was, anybody know what I'm talking about? Totally, Mike, I totally do. It makes total sense. It's what I do when like, I'm talking to my wife and she's like reading. And I ask her a question and she's just reading. I just make up answers like that. Funny voice entertains her. Are you sure it's not reading? Huh? Are you sure it's not Uh, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> I make a lot of stuff up in my head, Rose Jean, and it's just the way it is, you know? I mean, anyway, what we were supposed to be talking about is 
remember in the templates where I made you guys do a home page that then had the spotlight and then has three widget boxes or whatever you want to do. This eventually is going to be loop one. This is going to be loop loop two. This is just going to be static content, right? Then we're going to add a spotlight in there, okay? So this is where, in terms of like my business site, on the home page here, I'm using a unique home page template that I called page-home, when I should have called it front-page and just use that template automatically, right? So if we go back to here, then front page, what's up, Mark? So we go to a regular page, page.php. We go to our blog now, which is now our blog feed, because I've told it to use blog as the blog feed, index.php. A single posting, single.php. Here's the one that I forgot in the lecture. In other words, if I go back to this lecture, document head, footer, sidebar, index, page, single, static front page. I forgot one key one that I should have had you guys do. Because what happens if back to index, save as 404.php, save. I can also do one for search, save as search. Did you count to three? Yes. Good. Thank you. I know. Or a four dot PHP. Now here in a four oh four, it's just not found. We don't need the loop. should do is get search form. Like I said, I forgot to put that uh, in the lecture, but now it's in the video. So now I have, uh, let's see, index page, single, sidebar, search, 404, front page. So I have a good amount of functionality here that should be covered, right? If I then go back to my site and I refresh this not found, it should say, haha, sucka, search for something, 404. If I search for lorem, It's going to then, on the search page, show me all the pages that have lorem on it. Here's my search. If 
I'm back here at 404 and I say nothing found, right? So that's where on the search you can give some, if we go and check out my Git again, Four oh four. The page you're looking for does not exist. Try search. Get search form. Search. This is where search results. Here's what we found for you. Again, a modified loop. And then I put down at the bottom, still not satisfied. Get the search form. So that's where you can start taking these different page templates and adding in the proper functionality that you need for those page templates, right? Now, in terms of if I go back here and close some of these, except for single and page, here's the thing with single and page. If I go to a page in my site, do I really need this headline to link back to that page? I mean, it's kind of fun to just sit here and do this, sort of. So if I'm on page, do I really need that anchor tag to the permalink? No. Because it was from the, that's legacy from the blog feed, right? Single. I'm going to go to my single. Same thing. I don't need a link on that. Here on single then. Eventually, we're going to put in a byline. But I can just put that in temporarily. So now if I go back, right, go back to my home page. Again, it's my static front page that we'll work on next week. If I go to portfolio, now my headline doesn't link anymore. If I go to blog, my blog feed, those still link to the posting. If I then go to that posting, it doesn't link anymore, and it says the byline goes here. So. That pretty much covers this breaking things apart with templates. Okay. Was that relatively comprehensive? Mm -hmm. Not rocket science. See how this is basically Web 200 with functions? <laughs> OK, so I'm going to close out the recording. Oh, uh, yay, it lasted the whole time. Uh, good night and good luck. <laughs>